We all know the first rule, right? That everything here is true, and so be it. Even so, you always lose a little bit of credibility when something supernatural is mentioned. It just isn't real anymore from then on, no matter how much you want to believe. The true horror comes from stories that can actually be true. Well, this story is true, nevertheless. Believe it or not, I don't care. I just want to share the reason I left everything behind and moved away from my old life. Maybe find someone who is willing to listen without thinking I'm a total basket case. Is something supernatural involved? I don't know. I cannot confirm. You have to bear with me and make your own conclusions. I used to work every weekend for nine years as a bouncer in different bars all around rural Finland. The pay was good and nights were usually pretty peaceful. Every now and then there was a fight about something petty between young hicks. You know how it is. Your dad didn't lend you the tractor for our potatoes in 2004. Now you'll pay. Something like that. I didn't really care. I just made them pay for damages and come back in a couple of months. But there were some bars that were... nasty. Sometimes the only bar within 40 kilometers gets all the bad apples and good people drive to the city because they want to avoid the violent jobless drunks that rural areas always have more than enough of. So I decided to quit working those bars and started working only for one cute pub in the middle of nowhere. It was cozy and people were nice. They tipped well, which is really uncommon in Finland, and there were not many disputes. The only thing that was weird is that I always had to start really late, 11 p.m. to be exact. I was paid by the night, so it didn't make sense. But hey, all the better for me. Until the stupid daylight savings. In the fall of 2003, I was driving toward the bar, when I realized I was about to arrive an hour early. I was in the middle of a forest, so I didn't really have any options. I'll just work one extra hour, oh, no big deal. But as I drove on, I got this feeling I shouldn't advance any farther. The darkness was enveloping around me, and I had trouble seeing, even though the headlights of my car are somewhat decent. The trees of the forest were leaning over the road, and there was something in the back of my mind telling me to turn around. But you know how these things go. I was just being silly. Afraid of the dark, I'm a huge guy who protects others for his job. The feeling would surely pass. When I arrived in front of the pub, it was silent. I knew that it should be open, but there were no lights. There was absolutely nothing going on. Actually, I couldn't see any people around either. This pub was not the only building in this little village, so where was everyone? I got out of my car and started to walk toward the pub. Then again, the feeling from earlier grew stronger. I shouldn't be going through that door. I should just stay in my car or get the hell out of there. The darkness was growing ever more threatening. What's more, I could sense that despite the darkness and emptiness, something was around. There was something in the darkness, even though I couldn't see anything. I was pretty much on edge, so I decided to seek shelter. From my car? Of course not. I'm a rational human being who doesn't believe in the supernatural. So, like a dumbass protagonist in a horror story, I decided to enter the pub. The door was unlocked, so I thought to myself that the bar must be open. Everything was normal. Maybe there was a blackout in the area. Autumn storms had been sweeping through, so that must be it. I stepped inside and was met with nothingness. No music. No people. No lights. Nothing. Just the darkness 
which felt like it was about to swallow me. But I did hear something. Whispering. And not creepy unison whispering of some unseen spirits, but clearly several human beings, like they would have been discussing. This time I decided to trust my instincts. Very slowly and as silently as possible, I advanced toward the whispers that were coming from the main room of the bar. The door leading there was closed, but it was a glass door with black tape for decoration. The tape was peeling off, as it was an old pub, so I peeked in from a crack that the peeling had made. I have to tell you, this part was too hard for me to write in one sitting. I started to feel uneasy again, like the darkness was still with me. But I have to share this, or else the experience will cling to me forever. The bar looked pretty normal at first. It was dark, but I could see people standing in front of the bar counter and sipping from small cups. Something on the counter was acting like a faint light source. I thought it was a candle at first, but people were reaching toward it in between sips. It was a big glass jar, which was, in a way, glowing. Maybe there was a lamp in the bottom of it, I don't know. The people were whispering to themselves and filling their cups from the jar. Finally, I got a better look of the jar, and it's something I will never forget. It was filled with clear liquid, and in the liquid there was a baby floating in it. It was bloated, disintegrating, a rotting corpse of a small baby. Its skin was flaking and floating around, and people were catching the chunkier bits in their cups. And they just drank it away. They were drinking the fluids, the fluids and everything. I had seen quite enough. Quickly and silently, I dashed out of the bar and outside. But when I finally reached the cold autumn air, it felt like it was too hard to breathe like the air itself was much more solid. Moving felt like I was underwater, and at first I thought the shock was affecting me in this way. But nowadays, I think it was just the darkness. It had in a way solidified, and there was something there, something watching me. It wasn't going to let me go without a warning, but it was too weak to resist me any further. I reached my car and dialed the emergency services. Luckily, there is no cliches involved. I knew I had to call the police, and I did. There is 4G connectivity in the whole of Finland, so there was a signal. The call center fortunately didn't think it was a prank, and I told straight away that I must have witnessed the murder of an infant and that they should hurry there because I felt I was in danger. Even the car started with one try, and I drove to the main road and waited there so I could signal the arriving police. It was about half past ten when the police arrived. At the same moment, I started to see other people walking around. They were coming from the direction of the bar and acted like there was no worry in the world. I told the police what I had seen, and they called for backup. The rest of the night was a blur. I stayed inside one of the police cars as a witness, and I had to show the people what I had seen. But all they found was the jar. I didn't have to see the jar anymore, but I saw the look in the police officer's face who came back to speak on the radio. He was pale pale like a ghost. What's more chilling is that they found out where the baby came from. There was a lady in my hometown who had given birth to and killed several babies and stored them inside a freezer. News stories and police told that they had been found thanks to some neighbors who complained about the smell. But in truth, 
it was because of what happened in the bar. She was killing and selling the clients her babies. The official story, which is pretty easy to find on Google, didn't mention the bar or the twenty-something people who were in it. I don't know why they kept it a secret. Maybe because they didn't want to tell anyone what was behind this behavior. I think so. I met the reason outside of the bar. Or maybe it all was from the shock. It was a traumatizing experience, so my actions may be affected by it. But you can be the judge of that. At least, posting here will ease my burden at last. <laughs>